more about how I see Suzuki and Unitarian Universalism as parallel visions. I found at least eight things they have in common. Number one, they're both egalitarian. They believe in the equal worth and dignity of every person. Number two, they're both communitarian. They, they both see the community as a source of identity and as a locus for growth. Number three, they are both universalist. They see the potential in everyone, regardless of race or age or background or belief. Number four, they are both creative. They believe in artistic expression, regardless of background, and they want to see people, and especially children, discover themselves as creative agents. Number five, they both emphasize character. Suzuki believed that to become a better artist, you have to become a better person. Number six, they're both integrative. I like to say that playing violin is like trying to put together a 500-piece jigsaw puzzle. There are many things that must all come together in the right way. And in the same way, if you look around the room here, you'll see the same jigsaw puzzle effect. We tend to like to put together and to synthesize complex parts and complex ideas and complex people. Number seven, they both affirm life. I see Khan, or life force, everywhere I look now, but especially in the faces of my students and in their music. That's why I teach. And I think we all see that. And it animates our care for the earth and our desire to be conscious of all living things. And number eight, they both uphold love as the highest goal. Suzuki said that where love is great, much can be accomplished. What a privilege to be a part of this philosophy, this way of looking at the world, this way of recasting what children are capable of. Perhaps we can posthumously name Shunichi Suzuki an honorary Unitarian Universalist. Or maybe we could think of ourselves as honorary Suzukiites. <laughs> what if we also began to see talent in a different light? What if we challenged notions of what we and others are really capable of? What if we helped everyone discover themselves as artists? What if we challenged everyone, and I mean everyone, smallest children to oldest adults included, to engage in a quest for beauty and to do so within a community of other diverse people. Think of the power that music has to transcend race and gender and ideology and background and even religion. What kind of boundaries could we bring down if we brought this simple method into more people's lives? What social issues could we begin to address in a different way than we ever have before? If we could bring everyone's children together in the way that you've just seen here, around a common musical language and a common pursuit of character. What if music really is the key to solving our world's most pressing problems? Suzuki said, I think that people who love art and those who teach art and all of you should burn with the obligation to save the world. He truly believed that if we had more children learning the violin, we could save the world. And so the reason I wanted to share this message with you today was not that you sign up for violin lessons, although <laughs> I would celebrate if you did, but because I believe that this method and this philosophy is capable of transforming people at a very deep level and even saving the world. What if we were to take the components of Suzuki and build a brand new UU ministry to underserved populations? It's kind of mind-bending to think how we would do that. But just ask, do we really believe in the transformational power of art? Do we believe it has the capacity to bring peace to our world, 
so full of hate and conflict and political dysfunction that is now happening on a global level? Wouldn't it be a good thing for us to teach more children how to tune in to other people? To tune in to other points of view. To tune in to their environment. To tune in to their own humanity through the power of making music. Again from Suzuki. Music, tone, what remarkable power it has. Humans do not live through wisdom. They live within the magnificent workings of life. Sound breathes life. Without form, it lives. In closing, we're going to let the music now speak for itself. Letting this sound breathe life without form. I'm going to bring Nina Marcord up again. And we're going to play a gavotte, which is a dance. And as you listen, I invite you to reflect on how this life force has worked in your life and how it might work in our UU community as we think about how to go about achieving our most important values. Nina and I are going to tune in to each other, and I hope you can see in that a miniature of the humanitarian vision of Suzuki and all the possibilities that it might bring for us in helping our world to tune in. <laughs> 